So here's a big question. How does the mind and spirit connect into the body? What's the relationship? This is the central question of the clinical theory of everything. In order to qualify as, for me, as a clinical theory of everything, it's got to go beyond all the other theories of everything, which are all about what happens at a, a quantum level and energy level in physics that has no explanation for consciousness other than that in, in quantum physics, the deeper we look, the more we see there are no things, there's just energy fields and space, and how that interacts appears more and more to look like consciousness, that at the base of existence is the field of universal consciousness. For example, recent experiments confirming, uh, ruling out all the other possibilities, finally absolutely confirming non-locality of, of uh, what Einstein referred to as spooky action, action <clears throat> spooky action at a distance. You know, Einstein had uh, <clears throat> a logical mind and, and, and was thinking in terms of classical physics, which he was trained in, that there has to be a cause and effect chain. And he's thinking in, in time, in, in linear time, <clears throat> where so his concept was that, that light, electromagnetism, which propagates at the speed of light as a causal effect, as a waveform in, in space, that that would be the speed limit of the universe. But it turns out that's not true. That, that spooky, action at a, at, spooky action at a distance uh, actually is, is now proven. That, that there's quantum entanglement between two particles, no matter how far apart they are, when one changes, the other changes at the same time. It doesn't take any time for that information to get from one to the other. So information is already connected. That's consciousness. Consciousness is information that connects across space-time. That's my definition of consciousness. When you see the stars, you have information about something that's far away. Now, in, in, in that classical sort of Einsteinian thinking, it, it took maybe millions of years for that light to get to you, and so you're having a connection with how the star was in its past. But actually, uh, research, for example, on gravity shows that if, if that was the case with gravity, if there was that delay in the propagation of gravity, that the solar system would be unstable, that, that the planets would, would move out of their orbits. But so the, the actual connection is simultaneous. There's information that's in both places. And so yes, the light wave took time to get here, but there's actually also a light wave that travels in reverse time. We see this at a quantum level in, in research where they set up experiments where, uh, where the wave can't, can't, can only go through in a certain way. And if you change the pathway, uh, the, the changes actually propagate in reverse time just as well as in forward time. So there's a, 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 a one of the models that explains that quantum effect of, of, of light is that uh, there's a negotiation across time to, to determine the pathway. There's a forward, like a, a, a ray that, pre that goes ahead and is, is looking for the path and a ray that's coming back and they negotiate and find the one pathway and then that's what we, what we see in, in the research is that negotiated pathway of information communicating between the future and the past creating the actual present that, that, that we observe. There's the whole concept in, in quantum physics that the actual quantum doesn't, doesn't exist until it's observed. It's the act of observation that creates the, the localization of, of that energy into the form, into that form. Uh, so it, it's like a, a, a holographic model of the universe. One of the current physics models is that the universe could be like a hologram, where in a holographic image, you can have a three-dimensional image that actually is created and held in a two-dimensional film. In order to create that, you need to have two coherent sources, two laser beams that cross. And the interference patterns between those two coherent sources is what then creates this image, this three-dimensional uh, apparent reality, this, this uh, 
perception. And so if in, in the clinical theory of everything, we see, I see the universe itself as a universal consciousness that's ever-present, future, past, present, and everywhere. Uh, this is the, the in, in, in uh, physics, they'll call the vacuum, but uh, more properly called the plenum. Vacuum, vacuum means emptiness, but if we look at the energy that's present in space, in, in a very small space, there's more energy present than all in all of the matter in the known universe. So, uh, and this explains, it's, it's not a different energy in that space and the next space, it's the same energy present everywhere in space and time. And, and the matter itself is actually just like bubbles in that sea of, of one sea of consciousness. <clears throat> but to create those little bubbles of, of quantum localization and presence, uh, it takes, like in a laser, like in a hologram, it takes two coherent sources. Well, one coherent source is the existence itself, the unity and the, the plenum, the fullness of consciousness that exists, in which we exist. And the other is our perception, our consciousness, that the crossing of those two paths is the, like, like the two laser beams in a, uh, creating a hologram. There's an interesting study with uh, holograms with DNA to illustrate the power of, of quantization uh, through that holographic process. If you take DNA and you put it in a test tube and you set, shoot two laser beams through it, you're creating an interference pattern of how those two interact with the DNA that set, sets up in the glass of the test tube. And so then you can take the DNA out of the test tube and you have an image. You have a, a, the film effect is in the glass. And now if you reintroduce the laser beams, you create a holographic image. So now you have the, the, the light energy field of as if there was DNA there. So it's a memory. You have the memory of the DNA in space. And then if they found if you reintroduce the individual DNA bases, you know, the guanine and adenosine and uh, all the different bases that make up the DNA individually, they will self-organize in that field, in that image. They're, they'll make the original DNA sequence in the image of the hologram of the DNA that had been there. That's a resurrection process that demonstrates that the, the image of the DNA that's held in the spirit body is sufficient, has the sufficient information and, and that there's an actual real world laboratory documented process that can restore that structure, the body itself, the physical body, the biological body, under the proper conditions where the right materials are supplied freely and in the, in the presence of these crossed laser beams of two coherent consciousness sources can restore the body.